Today we are going to look at biconditional statements. So we make a biconditional statement by combining our conditional and our converse into one statement. So remember that your conditional statement was if C then Q. And your converse flipped it was if Q then P. The biconditional changes it up a little. It is P if and only if Q. So your hypothesis if and only if your conclusion. Our first one, example today, we want to write the conditional statement and the converse within each biconditional. So we're given our biconditional. Our biconditional is two angles are congruent if and only if their measures are equal. Okay, so that if and only if separates our hypothesis and conclusion. Everything in front of it is our hypothesis. Everything after it is our conclusion. Now I need you to tell me what there is referring to. It's referring to two angles. So when we write our conditional statement, remember conditional start with if. So if the two angles are congruent, comma, then their measures are equal. And then in converse flips that around. So if two angles measures are equal, then they're congruent. Next one, we are given the conditional and we want to write our converse and biconditional. So again, you need to figure out what your hypothesis and conclusion are. And our hypothesis is 2x plus 5 equals 11 plus p. Our conclusion is x equals 3. So to write our converse, we're going to flip that order. If x equals 3, then 2x plus 5 equals 11. And then we want to write our biconditional. So it's the same order as the original, but we put if and only if in the middle. So we have 2x plus 5 equals 11. If and only if x equals 3. In order for a biconditional statement to be true, both the conditional statement and its converse have to be true. So Conditional statement and converse must be true, otherwise it's false. Next up, we want to determine if each biconditional is true. If it is false, we need to give a counterexample. So our first one. Remember, before the by, before the if and only if is the hypothesis. After the if and only if is the conclusion. And what does it refer to in this statement? Yes, 
this it refers to a rectangle. So to write our conditional statement, keep in the same order, start with if. If a rectangle has side length of five and four, then has an area of 20. Mm, what is the truth value of that statement? So it's the only way that a rectangle can have an area of 20, a side length of, no. It. Does a rectangle with side lengths of 5 and 4 have an area of 20? Yes, every time. So that is true. Then we're looking at the converse. Remember converse, we're flipping the order. So if a rectangle has an area of 20, then it has side lengths of 5 and 4. And what's our truth value for that one? For those of you who are saying it's true, it's the only way that a rectangle can have an area of 20 with side lengths of 5 and 4? No, this is false. On that counterexample, it would be side lengths of 2 and 10. Then our next one, we have y equals negative 5 if and only if y squared equals 2. So this arrow going both ways means if and only if. Now, I do not want you using that when you're writing a sentence completely out. You need to use the words if and only if. But this still means that in front of this is our hypothesis, and after the arrows is our conclusion. And we can write our conditional statement and our converse from that. So we have if y equals negative 5 then y squared equals 25. So we'd have if y equals negative 5, then y squared equals 25. What's our truth value? Yep, that is true. And then our converse, we're flipping our order. so. If y squared equals 25, then y equals negative 5. What's our truth value on that? For those of you who are saying that is false, what would my counterexample be? Yeah, x can also equal 5. Mm. 
Okay, next up, these four statements are what we know to be true. That is all we know for a fact. So we need to use these four statements to determine whether these following conclusions are valid. So the first thing we know for a fact is the top football team is playing in the Super Bowl in Dallas. The second thing we know for a fact is that Joe and Carrie go to Dallas. The third thing we know for a fact is that Carrie likes to shop. And the fourth thing that we know is that Joe always goes to Super Bowl. So the first conclusion, Joe went to Dallas. That is valid because number two says Joe and Carrie go to Dallas. So they went. Next one, Carrie went to the Super Bowl. That is invalid because the only person that we know always goes to the Super Bowl is Joe. Which means the next one, Joe went to the Super Bowl, is valid. And the last one, Carrie went shopping in Dallas. So we know that Carrie likes to shop, and we know that Carrie went to Dallas, but none of this told us that she actually went shopping in Dallas. So this is invalid.